unit is all about electricity, how it's produced and how it can be used. In order to understand how electricity is produced using portable device like a battery, first thing we need to know is how to find the charge of various species because voltaic cells, which are what pack the electricity that you use in your portable devices, get that electricity from a flow of electrons from an oxidized species to a reduced species, from anode to cathode through a device. So before we can tell whose charge changes, we need to be able to figure out what the charge of any species is in a chemical reaction. So first what we're going to do is we're going to find the oxidation numbers or the charge of species. Rule number one is very simple. Elements that are not part of a compound have an oxidation number of zero. Why? Because the number of protons equals the number of electrons. No electrons have been lost, no electrons have been gained. If an element is by itself, it has no charge. Because if it had a charge, it would be in a compound, wouldn't it? I mean, you can't have something positive without it being bonded to something negative. Therefore, if an element is by itself, it has no charge at all. All by itself, it has no charge. All by itself, it's all alone. The oxidation numbers of the elements in a compound add up to zero. You already know this. This is how you wrote chemical formulas to begin with. So, whatever sodium is, chloride has to be the same size charge, but opposite. Whatever calcium is, bromide has to have half its charge because it takes two of them to cancel out the calcium. Whatever nitrate's charge is, it's half of irons because it takes two nitrates to cancel out the iron. And this is slightly more complex, we'll get to that in a moment. According to the periodic table, sodium has a charge of plus one when it's in a compound. Therefore, chloride has to be minus one for them to cancel out. According to the periodic table, calcium is plus two in a compound. So bromide is minus one. It takes two minus ones to cancel out a plus two. We can verify that. Bromide is minus one on the periodic table. You might say, well, what about these other charges, plus one and plus five? Well, you see, if the ion it's bonded to is positive, the only way it's going to bond is if its charge is negative. So the only possible charge here is the negative one. Iron has two charges listed on the periodic table. Iron can either be plus two or plus three. So which one is it? This two down here tells us that the iron is plus two. If the iron was plus three, we'd have a three down here. Now it's normally enough to just find the charge of the nitrate. But for the sake of fun, let's get the charge of the oxygen and nitrogen separately. Oxygen only has a charge of minus two listed on the periodic table. So oxygen is always going to be minus two. What about nitrogen? Nitrogen is a huge number of possibilities that its charge could be. Now its ion charge is minus three, but that would be if it's just nitride, like let's say FEN, where the nitrogen is by itself. But because the nitrogen is part of a polyatomic ion, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Here's how to figure it out. There's one iron in the compound, so iron's total contribution to the charge is plus two. There's three times two is six oxygens. Now each of those six oxygens is minus two. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six negative two oxygens in this compound. What are six minus twos? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Six times minus two is minus twelve. So oxygen's total contribution to the charge in this compound is minus twelve. Now the charge of the elements in the compound have to add up to zero. So whatever nitrogen is, we know it has to be positive because the negative is much bigger than the positive so far. Plus what is going to make this cancel out? Plus ten. Plus 10 and plus 2 adds up to plus 12. That cancels out the minus 12. There are two nitrogens in this compound. Now, if two nitrogens are plus 10, how do you get plus 10 with two nitrogens? If each nitrogen is plus 5. 
plus 10 divided between the two nitrogens is plus 5 for each nitrogen. And then we verify it. Nitrogen can, in fact, have a plus 5 oxidation number. Now, like I said, more often than not, you just want the charge of nitrate. But they may ask for the charge of nitrogen in this compound. They do? That's how you do it. Let's get magnesium phosphate. Magnesium has a plus 2 charge listed on the periodic table. Phosphorus can be minus 3 plus 3 or plus 5, so we'll come back to that. Oxygen, we already know, can only be minus 2. So let's find out what phosphorus is. There are three magnesiums, each one is plus 2. Three plus two magnesiums is a total of plus six in charge. Three times plus two is plus six. Plus two plus four plus six. There's four times two is eight oxygens. And each one has a minus two charge. Now if we have eight oxygens and each one is minus two, minus two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, well, that's what we would expect, minus 16, because 8 times minus 2 is minus 16. So what does phosphorus have to be to make this all add up to 0? Plus 10. Now we'll have plus 16, which will cancel out a minus 16. But how much is each phosphorus's charge? We have two phosphoruses, which combine for a total charge of plus 10 which means each phosphorus is plus 5. Plus 10 divided between the two phosphoruses is plus 5 for each of the phosphoruses. Or is that phosphori? Let's do these last three examples here. Iron has a charge of plus 2 or plus 3. So we'll come back to that. Oxygen, as we said, is always minus 2 in charge. Now, they cancel each other out one to one, so whatever the negative charge of oxide is, iron's going to be the same size positive charge, plus two. We can apply that to this one as well. Oxygen is minus two. Two times three is minus six. Three times minus two is minus six. What cancels out a minus six? A plus six. And that plus six is divided between two irons. Divide plus 6 between two irons, each iron has to be plus 3 in charge. Plus 6 divided between the two irons, each iron is plus 3. Sodium, like all group 1 metals, has a plus 1 charge. Nitrogen has all these possibilities here, so we'll come back to it. Oxygen, as we've said before, can only be minus 2. There are three oxygens. Three oxygens, each of them minus two, combines for a total charge of minus six. The sodium was plus one, so what does the nitrogen have to be to make this all add up to zero? Plus five. Plus six, minus six. Now there's only one nitrogen. That nitrogen is plus and that's how you find the oxidation number of any element in a compound. Or, if the element is by itself, it has no charge at all.